Okay, hello everyone. I thought that in view of the new upcoming cars that are coming out for Race Room very soon that we've all been working on, that I do a bit of a preview, but give some hints and some tips and talk about car setups and how to actually drive the car. So the first one that I'm going to start off with is going to be the Porsche 962. That's this Yurst car, which is based on the 1992-1993 model with the big wing on the back. And the first place that I'm going to start actually is going to be the garage. So, let's just look. First of all, we're, we're on default setup, which the aim has been for a while now just to make sure that the default setups are just nice and usable and there's nothing sort of too unusual about them and, and anyone can pick up and play and drive and it's all quite believable that's that's the main aim um, so let's just start from the top just here um, the tow settings there's nothing sort of unusual to talk about with that really um, bump and rebound you can see that we've just got a little bit more um, a little a little few more clicks on the front that we've got on the rear springs in this are very very stiff um, it's got actually quite a spring range, but uh, we'll keep it at default. Um, now, remember when you're looking at spring ranges, you can't compare front and rear because the lever ratios and the way that the dampers are mounted are, are completely different front and rear. So you've just got to take them as two completely separate entities. Um, the camber, these cars don't tend to run very much camber because the tyres are really, really stiff. So they actually like to be set pretty upright. But um, the camber that we've got on there is is giving it pretty much optimum camber in the middle of most turns. It's, it's sort of thereabouts. It's not something that you're uh, ever going to get absolutely perfect. It's always a bit of a compromise. Usually you have a little bit less camber on the rear because it helps traction. A little bit more camber on the front because the front of the car tends to just uh, actually need a little bit more camber just to help the tyre bite. Uh, now we get to some stuff that's a bit more interesting. We've got the ride height adjustments in this, and if we go absolutely to the very lowest, we've got 3.5 centimetres and 5.7 centimetres ride height. Um, that's something that's really important to be playing with on these cars because they're full on ground effects cars. So, what that means is that the underbody of the car is actually sucking the car down to the ground as you drive along. Um, and you can really do quite a lot to alter the balance of the car and you can get it completely wrong or um, you can sort of tune a little bit more front balance or a little bit more rear balance depending on exactly what it is that you do with these. So if you wanted to have a little bit more um, grip at high speed at the front for example, you drop the front end, front end down. But you've got to be really careful doing this because once the car gets to a certain point and, and the, the car starts to bottom out and gets too low you can hear it scraping the ground but effectively that blocks off the diffuser so you, your downforce is a fraction of what it would, would be when it wasn't doing that so what you've got to watch out for all the time is that you're never bottoming the car out so a good way to set up a car is just to find that point of where it does bottom out and go a little bit higher up than that um, but as I said as we are at the minute this base setup is is a sort of good all-around usable setup and it shouldn't be bottoming out anywhere um, now anti-roll bars um, nothing sort of too unusual about that you can take them out you can turn them up and down um, you know we just use the anti-roll bars to tune the handling of the car in the middle of the corner um, we do other things to to tune the handling on the way in the way out but mainly the anti-roll bar is just for the mid-turn stuff so stiffer anti-roll bar makes makes a tyre sort of work in a different condition so it gives it less grip so if you wanted to have a little bit of a uh, a, a rear end that wanted to rotate a bit better mid-turn then you stiffen up the rear anti-roll bar okay now the next thing that we've got that's nice to look at is we've got a couple of tyre compounds that come with this now the way that we've set up the tyre compounds with this is the soft tyre really is a 25 minute half an hour tyre and after that it is completely shot so it's a it's a sort of short race sprint race qualifying type tyre um, 
and then if you're doing longer distance races you've got your hard tyre that um, that's going to be the one that you're going to be using most of the time and the time difference between the two, two is quite a lot actually really we we generally sort of one to two and a half seconds a lap between the hard and the soft tyre um, now we've you'll notice just here that you've got something new we've got tyre pressures um, just be careful when you're using these tyre pressures because all the left hand column for the front and all the right hand column for the rear you're not looking at the car from above and thinking that's front left and that's front, front right it's not that's front and that's rear so just be really clear of that otherwise you'll have, have some very strange results okay so moving on to the next thing we've got uh, some some more aerodynamic settings so what we've done here is we've got three clicks on the front splitter and we've got we can go up to 30 degrees or down to 10 degrees on the rear wing now what, the way that that's working is by default we've got um, the cars at its most aer aerodynamic efficient so if we add more wing on or take a little bit off it actually becomes aerodynamically less efficient so in other words it's making more drag for the amount of downforce that it's got as a ratio um, so what we've actually got in effect the way that this has been done with three clicks on the front is you have got quite a big difference between each of the three clicks the uh, the mid one is just a sort of medium downforce you know as you might have guessed already from what I've said about the other setup parameters the first click is low drag so imagine that's taking the dive planes off and you're blocking off, off the front underbody diffuser so the aim of the game there is really just top speed it really takes quite a lot of downforce off it it sort of pretty much takes half the downforce away from the front end so that is simply a high speed fast track sort of setup um, really makes a big difference and you've got this third click here the highest setting and that's the complete opposite so that is for absolute maximum downforce drag isn't a consideration the top speed is really sort of quite harmed compared to, to click one but you gain so much more downforce that's the trade-off you got to decide on so what I typically say is click one low downforce click two sort of medium speed tracks with some high speed bits and some and some low speed bits and the third click the highest setting is for really twisty tight circuits so sort of thing you know maybe mid Ohio with the chicane um, sort of if you're racing on stow something like that you know get it get the downforce wound right up um, actually I find that, it, that the high downforce works really uh, well here at most so what I will do is I'll turn up the rear wing as well to balance it and uh, with the front downforce making such a huge difference you, you have to just make sure to trim it on the rear otherwise you have a, a pretty bad handling car um, now brake pressure brake bias um, nothing sort of too much to say about that there isn't too much um, of a difference between front and rear because the car's quite stuff, uh, stiffly sprung so it can actually handle quite a bit of brake pressure on the rear <coughs> When it comes to the gear ratios we've got uh, gear ratios which are perfectly matched from the Porsche 962 uh, parts catalog so we've got a few different options for each gear you can see we can go a few clicks each way with each one but I should just keep it by default now yep I definitely keep it by default now that's going to be too short for here uh, fuel I've got that locked off because I'm actually running with uh, without fuel usage on and then when it comes to the differential this is uh, an important thing to mention so you will probably read if you're into it that Porsche 962s came with a spool differential so that means it didn't have a differential in effect it was it was locked there could be no speed different difference between the, the left and the right rear wheel that's not the case with this car um, it was a development that was later on in in its in its life cycle and it had a proper limited slip differential in it and we can have some pretty fine adjustments here I've made it so that 
these actually refer to ramp angles um, and one click comes to about six percent which is about five degrees on a ramp um, so there you go and then you've got your preload here which is which is pretty damn high but it wants to because it keeps it nice and stable at high speed um, and if you try to cure that low speed understeer it ends up a bit of a pig at high speed so don't do that and then when you get to the steering settings the steering ratio is sort of gt3 ish that's about how it was um, and with that set up like that I shall go for a drive let's get into the cockpit view <coughs> just have a little bit of a look around with the mouse you can see the Porsche uh, oh we can't quite sit here the silver thing right in the middle that's actually the key so it's uh, one of the very last race cars purpose-built race cars that actually came with a key okay so let's drive I'll keep the uh, input monitor on so you can see just how things go. Oh, nearly stalled. Right, okay, so first of all, it is pretty fearsome on the throttle response with the turbo lag. You can hear that there. <laughs> Plenty of turbo chatter and whatnot. Okay, so we'll just take it for a few laps of most. So things to be aware of in this are that <clears throat> it uses a synchromesh gearbox, it's not a dog box. So what that means is that you just have to take your time a little bit with the gear changes. It's not so much of a fan of just a lift for a gear change. I mean you can do it, but if you do it too quickly you've got quite a high chance of um, not engaging the ne next gear which is pretty disastrous okay so let's get down to business a bit now remember I've got the high downforce set on we'll just do a few laps of this place so it's worth mentioning that because the car is so stiffly sprung you have to be quite selective in which curves that you um, tackle yeah, the steering is quite nice. Make sure to blip on the uh, the down changes as well, otherwise it's quite easy to lock the rear and because it's so stiffly sprung it's not particularly forgiving. Okay, let's go for a half decent lap. And there's my brake marker. So yeah, we'll just be really careful around the curbs at low speed and on the way out the turns that second gear you can hear it takes, takes a little bit of a while to um, actually get the turbo to spool up so down to second through this now the thing that I think is a bit deceiving about this as a car and the noise it makes um, it's actually still got quite a lot of torque even when it's when it's off boost so it's sort of tempting to drive it like a single seater or like a modern car and try to rev it all the time but when you get to sections like this next one right here you can actually let the drops let the revs drop surprisingly low when you're actually really on it and it will pick up quite nicely for you careful to rev match so you can see just around here just exactly the same again and when you get sort of in the groove of it and you can anticipate exactly when the turbo spools up you can just time it quite nicely so it comes on boost just at the right moment just as you want it right we can definitely do better than that you can see just a little bit early on the down change then so a little bit of curve just selective with it you'll find that the rear end of this is actually quite predictable it does like to spin up the rears but it's all quite controllable how it does it feedback from all the drivers all the real drivers was always that it didn't really have any vices it would always just sort of do what you wanted it was pliable 
consistent. Just hear it bottom out a little bit then. Let's try second just to see what happens. Look, you can see you kind of could almost do with being up a gear already. curb but you can start to really when you get your head around it you can start to really play with the throttle and get the rear end working nicely but you know you can see it's not a stressful car to drive it's just um, it's quite a nice tool we'll just take it down for a, another lap and then bring it in the pit lane maybe It's out of the really slow turns that you've got to be most careful with this because um, there you go, rush the gear change because it can be quite understeery at low speed. You know, just sort of lets you know that that's about as fast as you're ever going to do it. Um, and then if you're a bit too keen on the throttle, trying to get the rear end to rotate, it can suddenly give you a lot more power than you're anticipating. Okay, but as I said, I'm going to take it back in the pit lane right now. Should we stay off to the right? And there we go, back in the pit lane. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Porsche 962 for Race Room. I hope you enjoy it when it comes out. <laughs> 